Welcome everyone to Old World Blues, the A to Z series which we're playing as Nuevo Atlan, led by speaker Yesenia Atlan. Oh god, the person's ineffective. Yesenia has rode over the Empire since she was unexpectedly thrust under the throne in her youth, following Tlaloc's nuclear bombing of an army headed by both her mother and father, and the subsequent death of both of her brothers during the painful retreat that followed. The specter of this dark event has hung over her ten years empress ever since, and her subsequent defeat at the hands of the Itza have only strengthened murmuring that she may be unworthy. Despite all this, the blind empress knows that she cannot afford to abandon the weight of leadership for a terrible dream has haunted her for the last ten years. She knows that Tlaloc shall die, and with his departure shall come an air of bloodshed and chaos. But where are the Atzala, the library? Uh, Legend said the first speaker saw the bombs fall, and later people threw a dying world to the fallen city of Xochicalco. They lived where so many others perished, and the Liberator. While some nations hold men and women in bondage, the Atzalan emancipated their slaves because it was a just thing to do, and because Empress had a bad dream. Reclaiming Destiny. Uh, some of those who followed the library returned to the old ways, seeing her as a prophet who walked the same paths that the Nahuatl had. Her skulls were confirmed again when the Caracachas uh, came from the north, monsters under an eagle banner. They broke into a military base near Xochicalco and tried to steal a garden of Eden creation kit. But the library foresaw their arrival, although skeptics say she heard the Corcaraches broadcasting an on an unencrypted channel. She reclaimed the Gek and used it to heal the world. So on this route, um, I've, I've done this campaign before, and I went down the Noble Privilege route. So, um, so I went down this route before. Uh, so we're, that was at Elites. So I think I might want to try this route, the Jaguar's Dream, with the Intellectuals. And to go with the Intellectuals, we want the Jaguar Cult. She's a Gek on the Zochicalco. She was a geck on the early lands of the empire. Stability, life bringer, stability, war support. That's not bad. Uh, it's a geck on Mexico City. War support. Stability and war support. Stability. Just war support. But you get infrastructure. We can always build more infrastructure. I'm not worried about infrastructure. Mm. Stability and war support. Well, we can always get more of both. I'd rather have the infrastructure as well. Um, actually... Where is our trade node? Can we build up a trade node right now? Is Mexico City? No. Xochicalco is. So, Puebla, Xochicalco. Uh, ah, screw it. We'll get that one anyways. We're gonna route, shall we? Get the route. Oh, four nodes. Not bad. Uh-huh. Trade nodes. Capsmith. Pretty cool. Uh, then what? The legislature. The Atzlan Empire is governed by a complex code of laws cementing its quasi-feudal society. It is governed both how the Atzlan treat emperors and foreign tribu tributaries. The Liberator of the Atzlan. The Liberator said to have a dream in his youth in which he saw the empire crumble due to a slave revolt, spreading like a flame across the imperial banner. To stop this, he emancipated the slaves upon ascending to the throne. The Liberator uses Cry of Libertad to conquer towns throughout Mexico, bringing them into the empire with the aid of the people. In a dream after one conquest, he saw the future again. A flame spread across Mexico, but now is spread by those who once wore chains, marching under the imperial banner. He saw those men shorn of shackles marching forth in the name of Aslan. They waved the banner of the feathered serpent. They waved the banner of the flayed man. Ooh, organization. I like the speed recovery. That's nice. The flayed man sounds good to me. We have dynamite. Ooh, we could probably get some bikes. Oh, uh, we could use some saws. Caravan equipment, maybe? Stripped power armor for now. We'll probably get rid of that eventually in due time. And some of that too. So I'm just going to move you guys up here. I'm going to move you right there. That stuff is pretty important overall. The loss. The fourth speaker was among the greatest leaders of the nation, but his time was tragically cut short. As the world began to recover from the Great War, and the Atsalan Empire arose above local warlord level, one of the speakers realized the empire needed a formal legal code. The Josefina Code synthesized pre-war Mexico's legal system with the rough and ready justice that arose since the war, imposing obligations and privileges upon the people of the empire. The code provided a safety valve for the desperate by letting them declare bankruptcy and enlist in the Atsalan army, and codified Chiapas' position in the empire. The Wasp Act gave the empire plentiful warriors. Oh, that's a lot of population. The Treaty of Oaxaca ensured Chiapas' loyalty. Chiapas. Consumer goods. It's not bad, but this is just radically too strong that we cannot ignore. The Wrath of the Old World. The last speaker was our greatest, but like the hummingbird who flew too high, he reached for the sun and perished. The speaker thought he could invade territory under the control of Tlaloc, refusing to believe that the aging AI could stop him. The speaker was wrong. He and his wife perished in battle, along with 10,000 Atlan warriors, then when Tlaloc dropped a nuke on his forces in Camino a los Aztecas. The defeat threw the empire into chaos and left its great works unfinished. Oh god. The last speaker knew the world was changing. 
to lock it, you to Mexico, but he kept it trapped in amber. No great warlord could oppress the land, but no great hero could save it, either. Pursuing the orders of a long-dead world, La Loc at Mexico weakened divided, protecting Mexico by crushing any force too powerful as a guerrilla element. But as it began to fall, opportunities beckoned. The ships of Chiapas brought word of bears and bulls, while the Ma Mayans emerged from their jungles to menace the land, to survive. The Aztlan would have to become more than an empire, it would have to become a nation. Too bad his plans perished in a mushroom cloud. He left the nucleus of a professional army. Wow, tons of population. Let's see of a higher learning. Uh, I, ugh. I have to go with this one. I have to. It's, it's so good. Even though I want intellectuals, it's so good. The gathering at Xochicalco. When the bombs fell, refugees fled to the ruins of one of Mesoamerica's greatest cities, Xochicalco. The Lords of War, the Jaguar, and Eagle Cult are terms used for the Empire's uh, professional army. Far from uh, religious fanatics, they have an esprit de corps that the Legion would envy. The Lord of the Trade, the Baron of Chiapas, has spread its tentacles through the Atlan economy. Some people dislike this. The Gathering, though. The speaker has gathered the leaders of the Empire together for a conference, but each of them has its own dreams and hopes. Yesenia dreams of uniting the Empire under her rule. Ocelot uh, thinks more power should be granted to the wealthy and powerful in the Empire, and that if they are rewarded, they will support his dreams of conquest and a lower marginal tax rate. And Quatili, and his Jaguar Nuts dream of an Empire where any can rise to the top, including their backwards travels. And of course, there is Kincaid, the poor descendant of the Cucarachas. Why can't you all get along and do as I tell you? Lord of the Sea, the red-headed stepchild of the Atsalan, the navy is full of impoverished nobles and rich commoners who aren't welcome in the imperial cults. The Coffee Baron, looking behind every wicked, every wicked deal, every corrupt official, is Baron Garcia. He wheels and deals and extended loans with such favorable terms that many still wonder why his fingers are in every enchilada. To this day, some are still not sure a man who started selling coffee after nuclear war became the one who placed his grip on Mexico's economy. It mostly comes from controlling trade routes. An omen of destruction. Turlock has ruled Mexico like a distant god, strangling Aztlan even as he warded them from northern threats, but even a god must die. The frogs. Oh god, the frogs. While well, the wastes fear the awesome majesty of the Jaguar Knights and the endless waves of Aztlan conscripts the Aztlan Navy's known by its rivals as the frogs. The Navy is home to the misfits of Aztlan society, including descendants of Norte Americanos who try to steal Kek after the war. Second daughters and third sons are merchants who think they bleed just as well as any pompous noble. Nobody takes it that seriously. But Admiral Kincaid has plans to show the world that even a frog can kill with the right poison. Sorry, more about the guys in power armor. Uh, for many decades, a border clashes have arranged between ourselves and the Chichen Etzin Empire. The clashes revolve around three main states, Mexico City, El Ochoropenzoun, and La Tumba Compartida. Owning the states gives us important stability bonuses and also gives their enemy important debuffs. The border is contested every three or four months with initiative flipping back backwards and forwards between ourselves and them. If, if we fail to ignite a border war, as our hardliners demand, we'll face harsh consequences. Not a deal. It, but it is what it is. Fraga. Learn. Fraga, learn. The Imperial cuts. Uh, the Eagle and the Jaguar Knights see themselves as heirs of the late wars of the Atslan Empire, and who can blame them? Equipped with houses, bended power armor, and heavy weaponry, they are tear on the battlefield. But to equip these troops, the Atslan sacrifice elsewhere. Peasant conscripts are equipped with pipe guns and machetes, and imperial supply lines bring luxuries to the front instead of basic rations. If the Atslan ever reformed the military, it would be a threat to the rest of Mexico. Good luck giving imperial knights to give up fresh quadzel feathers. The Jaguar's decree is long the way to prepare for the future is to bring the entire nation together. Atslan should leap forward like a jaguar and bring its people out of the darkness. Inefficient agricultural practices. The Aztlan Empire is dominated by inefficient land holdings, run by nobility that focuses on personal excess instead of capital growth. This centers the growth of the Empire's internal market, and it's perhaps its greatest roadblock to greatness. The Death of the Thunderer. It comes in a dream to the Empress. A barrage of thunder, a scream that breaks like a mountain, or breaks a mountain, a pillar of fire across the horizon, a bull in the palace's gardens, a circling above, a eagle stone. She wakes up in a sweat oblivious to the darkness, for she traded her vision for sight a long time ago. The Empress shall speak again. Standing army, very nice, very nice. No political power. Among uh, the southern tribes. The southern tribes could be a valuable resource if we could ever persuade them to pay their taxes. Approach warrior clans. That's land doesn't need old men. It just needs fighters. Bob could use some fighters. Um, we're going, I guess, commercial warfare for, for now, maybe? I guess we'll see. We're getting a scavenging program, though. At least that's good. Building up some factories, we're going to need some more problems with more guns and whatnot. You know, the normal stuff.
Ohms, good old La. We need more guns, definitely. Uh, and then what? Bribery among the chieftains? We don't need to break the travels, we can break the chieftains and make them drag the rest of the people along. Settling debts. If we bribe the southern tribes, we'll stop harassing our troop movements through the nation, or through the region. Fish from Hawaii? Uh, that's not bad. I wouldn't mind getting some more political power, but we're losing political power, so that'd probably be a waste. Let's get some more war support. Modernize. We must modernize. All sorts of different routes we can take. The anniversary of the American occupation. Today marks a grim day. In Mexican history, the beginning of the American occupation. Even after two centuries, the people of Mexico still remember when American forces entered Mexico for the first time. The occupation led to the annexation and colonization of North Mexico into a pro-American puppet of Mexico, and the creation of the Petro Chico, an arm of Poseidon Energy, and the creation of the Rio Grande, whose American soldiers helped the Mexican citizens after the bombs dropped. Despite the centuries that have passed, the people of Mexico still have the fire of resistance in their hearts. Our people will continue to fight. An efficient uh, Atzlan warfare. Oh, God. Actually, we should have way more recruitable population factor then. Holy smokes. We have a lot less attack and defense, which is not good. Minimal exemptions. Well, it's pretty bad for us, too. I wouldn't mind going to extensive exemptions, but, you know, whatever. The armies of Atzlan are innumerable, relying primarily on elite warrior cults such as the technologically advanced jaguars and the tactically brilliant eagles. These warriors are supplemented by massive levy forces, drawn up from both the rural and urban populations of the Empire. While numerous, these forces are disorganized and very non-standardized. The Flower Wars. Following the defeat of Atzlan at the hands of the Itzan Columb de Sebastian II, the once brutal wars fought between the Chichen Itzan Empire and the Web of Atzlan have settled into a cautious status quo. Under the pressure of hardliners in an effort to maintain foreign prestige, neither side can dare to attempt to cease cessation of hostilities, but both sides see merit in limiting conflict between the two Mesoamerican superpowers. Clashes still occur between the giants on almost a daily basis, however, though these are usually restricted to short-lived firefights between border patrols. While we have this national spirit, we will be unable to justify war goals on any foreign power. They get from above. Over the centuries, the weather has changed drastically. Radiation storms and droughts ravage the wasteland. As seasons change in Mexico, our people and our especially our farmers was more prey for rain and prosperity for our crops. So let's hope this year is plentiful and the heavens have answered. That would be great. Fish from Hawaii. I love war sport. Military drills are fun. Travel modernization efforts. Movements on the border. Reports from the rough front tell a warring tale. Enemy troops are being relocated to the border of Mexico City. It's far too close to our borders. To just be routine training exercises, our treacherous neighbors must be prepared for an attack. To arms, an attack is imminent. Travel modernization. Oh, that's good. It's good to modernize. Capital refurbishment, rural renovations, fun urban development. Approach your water plants. Alright, so theorists. Military theorists would be nice. Oh, yeah, that's all this stuff. Vice Royalty Branch Office would be pretty good too. Fuel Depot. Apples, Alberta's. Of course, the Court Entertainment. Oh, uh, we have the city under us, don't we? Oh. We are. Oh, well, eventually we do lose it. Which we don't like. Build more. Ah, uh, for now, it's fine. Let's see what happens in the end, though. We need to be speed now. Fine. And here we go. Oh, are we the ones attacking? Um, call them the chieftains. Uh, Jaguar can get the chieftain to obey his call. The Empire needs new blood. Perhaps one of the speakers on her place is palace walls. Brewing of rebellion with the right inducts. The barons could be persuaded to stand down and struggle for an empire. Jaguar forms. A lot of a jaguar may be found in any Atzlani. Oh, crap. Whether they are noble or peasant, great men spring from great deeds, not the other way around. Defeated Atzlan hands. The under-headed empire of the Chichen Itza 
As these Hela Ochenben Sa'un from us in a surprise attack, it's sent forces were able to overrun our border forces and seize the territory before we could draft a full military response. Well, that sucks, guys. Come on. Let's do better, man. Independence Day. With the independence of the Vice Royalty from Atsalan, still in recent memory, the anniversary has become somewhat of an important day in West Mexico. For the Vice Royalty traders. It's a day of great festivity and celebration, with the businesses come times even closing early to celebrate. For the Atsalani loyalists, it's a mere somber affair. And not to studiously ignore by their point of willful ignorance, for the fear of appearing unpatriotic, we should really update their calendars. Not ideal. Follow the apocalypse, we will let them in. Arm for shops, no. Support Imperial Army reforms. Hmm. Got a lot of naval stuff, which, you know, I'm not big on Navy, but whatever. Full Warrior Integrate. Well, Tehuacan Stockpiles. Pre-war military stockpiles can be unlocked to equip the Jaguar Knights. Travel modernization efforts. The Asan tribes are like feet of clay, but we can turn them into sturdy boots. Oh, so they're called Chiapas. Oh. I was wondering who was Chiapas. You guys are Chiapas. What did you call before? Forget. I really do forget what they were called before. Maybe more political power. Beginner forms? Yeah. Our operatives are quite poorly trained, making their discovery and capture almost in inevitable. We'll need to review our evaluation procedures going forward. Sure, that's fine. Say what we're good. Uh, what else we got here? Enemy occupation of La Tumba Compartida. Compartida. Now, the only thing we occupy is Mexico City. Which kind of sucks. Mexico City, the once grand capital of Mexico, was decimated by nuclear fire soon after the start of the Great War. The nuclear hell fire triggered a mass migration from Mexico City and other major cities to its and Atzalan empires. Whilst, therefore, not a major strategic target, our occupation of Mexico City is a huge boost of prestige. British operatives. Our warriors may be well trained in elite, but our spies certainly are not. It says code, or CDEB, seems constantly to have the upper hand against us. Lightbringer, of course, the gag stolen from the forces of old America set the foundation of the outside empire, all not only for extensive farmlands necessary to feed the mass population, but to beat back the radiation dangerous urban areas. Banner of the Flayed Men, that of the Flayed Men is a depiction of. What? Uh, of the ancient god, Zip Totek. Despite not actually being worshipped, this visage is said to invoke terror in the enemies of his empire, and those who march under it wage war with great zeal. The story of the Aslan operative. There's a campfire story often told among its sons and the more daring of our slaves about the Aslan operative's attempt to assassinate an Aslan general. One day, a member of the La Fuerza decided to kill one of the Aslan generals. He traveled to Itza, found his home, and spent a week scoping it out. He surveyed every possible escape route, studied the general's security, and learned his routine adamantly. After all this, he contacted his boss and told him all he would need to carry out the assassination is a tiny pistol. Really? Uh, his boss asked, astonished. Nevertheless, the agent assured him that it would be more than enough. He had learned everything there was to know about the general. There was certainly no way for him to fail. Finally, the agent approached the general just outside his home. General, general, he said, shouting and waving his arms, I came to challenge you to an honorable single combat in the name of Nueva Aslan. Needs to say, the guard made short work of him after that. How embarrassing. Truly embarrassing. Dia de los Muertos. Today marks a traditional celebration of the Day of the Dead, while the origins of the festivity uh, have long most, mostly lost in the centuries after Armageddon. The spirit of supernatural celebration and ancestral rite remembers remain strong all across Mexico. From the highest classes to the lowest, commemoration of the event unites people, cementing this small connection with the world that has passed for another year. Save me a sugar skull. A warrior's proud legacy is sometimes overshadowed by our operatives. Colossal mistakes. Winning the flower wars will do more than. Take more than a strong army necessitating, necess necessitating major reforms. That's right. Uh, 
anti-personnel training. As the most formidable army in Mesoamerica, we're no strangers to administrating conquered lands. Nevertheless, our heavy-handed tactics do not always produce the best outcomes. It may be best for us to reflect on how to best use our agents to shore up our empire. Do that one. Uh, this one. We've got a large our operative pool. We tend to only make our agent selections from a smart group of candidates. Expanding your search process could help turn more promising recruits. Additional form, meaning that once this level of primary form is taken, it will no longer be available. Introduce new recon techniques. Our operatives could use outdated methods when scouting enemy formations and terrain. This often lead to subpar intelligence and even sometimes being spotted by the enemy. Well, I guess I'll wait for this one next, I guess. Oh, we've got a lot of things ready to go, don't we? Work is needed. Uh, do that one too. And then do not that one. This one. 12 days is nice. So in November. Uh -huh. There you go. Do what you can. Production, very nice, very nice. And then we're gonna go down this way too to grab. Well, I guess more research speed first. Movements on the border, oh boy. Uh, maybe you should stop training just in case. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, and we built some more labs too. We should keep doing that because we actually have the uh, money for it, which is great. Oh boy. Well, I don't think we're going to win here. Just saying. Defeat. Again? Wow, we are, we are sucking hard. Warrior entitlements. By extending the privileges of the Jaguar Gold to the Southern Tribes, we can expand the power of the army. This is really bad for us. Holy crap. Costa requests military support. Oh, it's Costa Cafe, not uh, Costa Cafe. Costa Cafe Costa. Now we're really sucking. Well, the relationship with the Costa Cafe not has been tense over the last few years. Uh, they still remain our vassal, and we their protector. An envoy from the compounds has asked to increase military support in the form of arms and tactics training to bolster the inadequate forces. Well, maybe Costa ignoring their request may cause them to drift away from us even further in the event we cannot stop them. If they can fight, they can fight for us. Functory military mission will survive. We don't have time for this. It's fine, you can have some help. Fly down the Alcapulco Bay. Why the wise is uh, such a lovely day. Just say the words and we'll beat the birds down to Alcapulco Bay. It is perfect for a flying honeymoon, they say. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. A southern fortification fund. The best offense is a good defense, and eventually the full warriors integrate. Oh. Well. Southern Fortification Fund, and one of the following. Prepare for the worst. Rise of the Quoto Cult. Oh, this one. Oh, look at this one. Flying Serpents. The Lock Control. Oh. Good. The skies, but it's our turn now. Today, marks a solemn moment for the Atzalani Empire, commemorating the great failure of the Northern War against the Lock and the crushing defeat of the Hands of the God Machine. Um, while the scars have mostly been healed, the lives lost in the disastrous campaign left to hold Natsalani people, and remembering their passing in a day of mourning is only a small part in healing the great wound of their defeat. Let's not dwell on it. Yeah, we kind of suck right now. Our guys are really not good at all. Additional talents reforms. Straightforward path of reforms will bring us. Um, on par with the Itzel, we'll need to explore further options at each stage of a process in order to surpass them. Pretty much, we gotta be ready for anything that happens. Basically. Oh, they're actually gonna work here too. Can we use any volunteers? Darn it. That sucks. I don't wanna send you volunteers. How bad is it for us here? That's pretty bad. Should 
Jaguar leaps. This is a little bit of bribery. Three days left. Wow, that's a long time still. Well, he stabbed himself. That's fine. Uh, Domingo de Gloria. Today marks celebration of Eastern Mexico. Even though big celebrations are not a thing in this ruined rule, the festivity and the idea of the holidays remain. Across Mexico, people are celebrating and try to bring the tradition back to Mexico. Seeing the practices of the old world are not completely extinct, give me a something. Valley. Not bad. Well, these divisions are only 12 combos, which is not very good at all. But that's why we made that edit already. There you go. Now we're going to be out of a serious amount of guns. Try to make yourself stronger. And the arms. Oh, we're gonna get a five. Okay, that's not good either. No one likes this. Okay, we're gonna struggle a lot more. A lot more than I thought we would. Let's see, selection's nice, but output would be nicer. They have founding. Um, the level three already. Become a local leader. I like Kibber. Uh, today marks the anniversary of our empire's great beginning. Celebrated through the acts of the first speaker. While our actions and personage have been long since passed into the myth, our first speaker, the Light Bringer, is venerated today for great deeds and found in the Aslan Empire. Festivities and processions across the empire commemorate the actions of the first speaker and our legendary acts of unification across Mexico, culminating in a great midnight feast and prosperity she brought to these lands. While the speakers have come and gone since the Light Bringer, her legacy in the heart of the Aztlani people will, will never be replaced. Glory to the empire. Settling debts, now oh, this one next. This is Reno, Mexico City, huh? Here. Get that army XP. Wait, you got defeated. Uh. Uh. Not sure that's supposed to still happen, but okay. This might be still slightly bugged. Okay, we have victory. With merry moods and hardened hearts, our brave Atlan warriors returned from the conquest of Mexico City. Though this conquest was not without loss, it brought with it great gain in the everlasting struggle of our eternal rivals. Bring back the spoils to Zochicalco. Well, okay then. I'm okay with that. Hope you all are too. Nice. Good stuff. Fund the Navy. Uh, Navy funded, localized. Entire, entirely in our dockyards this time of year? Yes. Do we have anything else here we could do here like this? Focus. 
recruitment efforts. Currently, recruitment efforts primarily focus on attracting young warriors into the army. By temporarily shifting new recruits towards cryptological training, we can make serious strides in that field. Give more description power. Oh, okay. Oh, that's easy. Boop. Looks like get rid of them. That's all I have to do. Anti-partisan training. Well, we'll get there eventually. I hate that we can't help him out. Puebla City Dock Expansion. Can't see the seeds if we can only field some rinky dinky canoes, can we? No, we won't be able to. The enemy of our enemy. Our greatest rivals of Chichen Itza Empire has declared war on Tierra de los Tzotzil. The escalation comes after Tierra de los Tzotzil Sajjal, Tobias Ray II, defeated the Itza's sponsored candidate Maximo Vela in a hand to hand combat following the Vela's challenge for the leadership of Tierra de los Tzotzil. Seeing that they now have no chance for a peaceful integration of the territory, um, the Itza have opted for an all out invasion. Following the declaration of war, the shrewd Sajjal Ray has called in various favors from a wide range of important aristocrats in her empire requesting any support that can be given. As a result, an influential group of aristocrats has begun lobbying Speaker Yasenia Atzlani to help Tia de los Tzotzil in any way possible. One of the possibilities it is to send one of our best generals, Christian Gailo, along with other thousand of her most recent weapons to assist her cause, or we can leave them to their fate. This will make it harder to kill them later. They step out of their lairs. To a great relief, the Jaguar calls to agree to help us in our struggle against the Itzens. Although officially, the Atslans have pledged neutrality in the coming war, the pile of guns left on our border implies otherwise. Yeah, thanks, amigos. Of course. We are here to help. Gates naval evolution now that he has something of a fleet. The poor fellow is happy to talk about commerce trading and fleets and beings. Well, some other weird stuff. Why would we put a fleet in someone? Hmm. Well, we got one fleet. At least one ship. The Serpent Rises. Kincaid's revived naval remind the Mayans why the Serpent Gods feared in the days of the Triple Alliance. A full war, full warrior integrate. The Triple Warriors have been integrated into the Imperial cults. We will welcome these new targets for enemies, which would be great for infantry and divisions overall. Now we have two options here. We've got the Jaguar cult with Power Armor Special Forces, or Eagle cult with his Wayless Armor, but they actually have two things here, so. It's strange, I know. Demos definitely, fire teams, uh, anti tank, absolutely. It's fine. No, your enemy, Bolton. Uh, from the great leaders. Citizens are enemies lurking in every corner. The Calumte, their armies, and their spies all seek to destroy us. In order to defeat this menace on our border, we need to only work together against them. All that requires is that you not trust your neighbors and watch every, their every move. The Etsen have laid spies throughout our territory hoping to find weak minds that can fall prey to the propaganda and lies, and only neighborhood vigilance can stop them. Whatever happens, remember, an Itzen sympathizer is an Itzen in disguise. Rich parity through other means? The size of our armies, unfortunately, not a parity with Itzen's. Though we can focus on training more troops, some advisors argue that we do best training all its in, and anti its and resistance forces in their own territory. What is this? Utilize our air force. We manage to build a competent air force with proper planning or foresight. We can make use of our planes um, and operations as emergency supply drops or evacuations. In Mexico City. Oh no. If 
freaking love Mexico City and attacking there, man. Not sure what's up with that. Yeah, and that one, and then settling debts. We brought the southern tribes to stop harassing troops moving through the region. Should be nice. Hurricane Tlaloc hit southern Mexico. Hurricane Tlaloc, named after the god of rain and storm, just made landfall in southern Mexico to bring destructive winds, rain, and reports that suggested the heavy damage was common. Leaving many roads and buildings destroyed and hundreds of people injured. Once again, the West End must endure. Unfortunate, my friends, unfortunate. It really is what it is, but it is what it is. Sure, be a jungle monkey. Train if you must. Travel development plan. Oh. Uh, is the Huatenenyo road clearance? Where we're going, we do, do need roads. Tribos de la Playa. The tribes of de la Playa are scared of surviving the wastes. Coyoquilla road clearance. You're probably wondering why we didn't clear these roads at some point in the last 200 years. Well, you see, what the barons fall. Tribos de la Caverna. The tribes of the caverns are great at finding pre-war tech and bunkers. Well, okay. Resistor, I hardly know her. Ah. That's, that's good. We can do that one, too. No, oh, can't do much there. No, we need more opinion here. Improvised tools. I'll put please. Oh, most definitely more output. More research speed. Well, those are a waste of because I did put on wild wasteland, but I don't think much is really going on. Settle on some debts. Oh, breaking up rebellion. With the right inducements, the barons can be persuaded to stay out and struggle for the empire. Let's see what happens to that. That doesn't sound like a bad idea to me. The right, interception's fine. Um, you know what? Both the special forces for now. They're important. Eagle cult. For now, we might actually switch to the other special forces, but we'll see. No guarantee. Power armor is nice, but I want to go. Oh, I guess I think we should go jaguar cult then, because we are going jaguars and we didn't go eagle. Noble privilege. Oh. We'll just rename ourselves. It's fine. Total Recall. The Baron has smuggled guns to us in some of the regular tribute shipments. Well, that's pretty good. Wow, it's already battle for Hood already. Wow. Wow. Now, since we can't do much there, we're going to keep doing that there, too. Approaching the Baron. The Baron is many things, but we a most valuable ally most of all. For the right price, we can reorganize or recognize our more lucrative trading opportunities for under Quartli. I would make his, to make his involvement a grand. We'll put him out of business too. Franchise opportunity. The Barons accept. Good news. The Barons swear fealty to the feature speaker. Uh, uh, the coffee supplies will be useful, but his men and guns will be even more valuable. A toast to our victories. Well, his victories for now. I wonder where we're going to attack next. Because even their divisions are getting thicker too. 
bigger, stronger. Take 40 cases, please. It's not much, but we'll take it. Keep going with the land doctrine, that's pretty important too. Please don't lose. Nice job. Oh, it's gonna steal me. What the heck? Huh. Victory! Oh, look at that. Well then. Good job, guys. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? You guys are gonna be trading all over the place anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. I'm okay with this. It actually gives more political power and hurts their political power too, so that's pretty good. Um, how about thinking metal? You're building more labs? Not yet, not really. I wouldn't mind getting more political power too. Local workspaces are ideal, yes. Are we building up any more? Uh, 10's not bad too. Gears Conviction, it's fine. Uh, we are touching Edge of Mexicano, which is not nice. We don't like them. This one too, and eventually the tribal development plan. By encouraging the tribes to buy and sell property, open public schools, and break down tribal structures, we can fully integrate the tribes into Atsulani society. Well, I guess we do this one. She does one next. So first, we get this benefit faster, eventually. Welcome to new targets for enemies. That's right. Ah, speaker. Jaguar cult is the most. Additional forms would be nice. We're only 6 air XP. Deploy agents on the border. Oh, has a border war. Oh, okay. A border war is broken now. We must act quickly and use this opportunity for our agents to get a better sense of the enemy's capabilities and equipment. How much stability? Get this one too. Finalized effort of education. We're close to having a robust training program for our operatives. Teaching additional methods and blending in with the local populace should certainly help. How bad are we right now? Competent, competence, not bad. Serpent of Mexico, occupier, singer power, additional reforms. It's not half bad. Yeah. It's not half bad. A lot of things are looking better now. Spec ops, support equipment, and whatnot. See what happens. Keep working on that land doctrine. We could end up optimizing trading, but do we need to? Maybe not. So what else are we missing a lot of? Anti-tank is the biggest culprit. Radio's nice. Uh, I don't think we're using robots in this campaign. I could be wrong, but I don't really plan on it. Military theorists, Jorge. There anyone who gets more political power, compulsive planner, quiet handler from Langley. Oh, that's pretty good. Speaker for the people. Resistance target, root up mission stuff. Spayer, war sport, despite war stones. Purchase of La Liberacion del Ciel. Our subject, Chiapas, is growing at a rapid pace due to their booming coffee industry. As they are near capacity, 
They have given us an, an extremely intriguing proposition. A purchase contract for La Liberación del Cio. Um, I rem the massacre, the land is of low value to us, however empowering Chiapas may not be the wisest decisions. After some outweighs the detriments. Uh, okay. Where is this one? Well, we'll see. We have the initiative. Well, clearly don't have it. We have it making you thicker. So, you should do fine. Nice, nice, nice. Victory, very good. We know now how to play the game. Good job, guys. Me. Aaron Kimball sent some power armor, basic training appointments, threads of life. Um, we're gonna go that one too. There we go. Utilize your own air force. Oh crap, I forgot to do that again. God dang it. Uh, settlements wouldn't be bad. I guess we can do that one for now. Because they're stuck, unfortunately. So do this one. We call the chieftains and then the hidden armories. Chieftains have managed to stockpile quite a few weapons that Imperial Auditors haven't noticed. They'll gladly turn over uh, them over to the Jaguar Knights and eventually the Jaguar Hunts. Ocelotu. Prepare to overthrow the speaker and usher in a glorious age based. Uh, well, look at that. Uh, on slightly different domestic policy preferences. Debris hits ashore. After the bombs fell, most ships that were ocean born at the time turned quickly into ghost ships after the crew ran out of food or died from radiation. To this day, countless derelicts still roam the seas, drifting along with the currents. Today, one of these rocks came across ashore, a shadow casting over our uh, salvage team. A gift from Chao Chua Tilekyu, God of the Oceans, it seems. Scrap it. We can learn from this. Just grab it, it's fine. I have to keep this open so I remember to do this. I want this. Can't believe I missed it. Not a deal. So that's not bad. The loyal tribes, you heard 40% of recruitable population factor, but everything else is looking pretty good. You got Boston Infantry, Special Forces, Division Organization as a whole. That's pretty nice. This makes you more political power in the end. This is another 50 day focus, which is insane. Whew. That is painful. You know, it's a good thing I've not played normal, like, Hoi 4 in a long time, since, like, that is what? 70 day focuses? Oh my god, can you imagine doing 70 day focuses again? I can't. Treaty of Waxaka. Once again, this town's come for to renegotiate a protection of the coast of Caffeinata Corporation. While well, originally these deals were fair and beneficial, the Baron has been able to exploit her weakness in the past years. No doubt AMZ uses this meeting as a final nail in the coffin of control over Costa, or Chiapas. We could accept the inevitable and grant Costa independence on our own terms. We're going to attempt to keep them under our thumb, but this may come back to haunt us. No. I want them to be here, under us. I like them where they're at. They might not like it, but what we want is the most important thing, right? Right, that's right. Uh, I should probably continue spending all this stuff. How much money do we actually have? Money was not bad. I should probably invest more in this node. There you go. Excellent. We like the growth. That's all the routes we've got for now, unfortunately. Call the chieftains. We must learn and do more. Just in case. How many more days must we wait?
Ah, uh, bottom up, that's not bad. I'm probably gonna forget it again, unfortunately, though. Hmm. Huh. And armories, and this one, the flying serpents. The serpent's nest, and airports need someone to take off. Let's clear a few peasant hovels to make room. Where to find the spires? If we can't control the skies, we can at least deny them to others. And the fry the koalt cut. Improve our mythology. Or role playing books, we can't quite tell. Flying serpents known as koalt control the skies. Let us honor them in their initiative. Border, the normal. That should be fine. Let special forces lead and do what they need to. Um, I wouldn't mind maybe jungle for special forces and whatnot, or this jungle. Yeah, why not? I mean, even though this might not be jungle and it's desert, we can use them eventually later on. The secret moot. Well, the tribes remain loyal to the speaker, they're always willing to question who's the true speaker. Beneath the full moon, drunk on the barren special brews, the tribes listen to Armando and his plans to reform. Shouldn't everyone in the Empire enjoy its fruits? Shouldn't they, most of all? Under the watchful eyes of the stars, each chieftain knelt before the new speaker, Armando Ocelotto. Let the jaguars roar. Before I forget, before I forget, I'm gonna forget. Let it happen, come on. Bust open, there you go. We got it. And then this one. Finalize operative education. 100 days, 120 days, we're gonna wait for that one, so. I think we want it there. We're doing. Oh, whoopsie. Wrong place. I think we're doing quite well overall. Oh, we got defeated. God dang it, that sucks. Um, but we're going to continue on going on with the uh, Nuevo Atzalan and making us really strong. So if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we we'll continue on with Nuevo Atzalan. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.